G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Well, sort of. We've recently looked at what we can do to add some AI content to the start of our game. We've added some bases in and we've had a look at what we can do around that. If you want more for your game in Space Engineers, there is a huge array of stuff available on the Steam Workshop. And there are some incredible modders for Space Engineers that have done some things that were way beyond anything that I'd ever expected. And I imagine Keen was pretty surprised at some of the things that the communities managed to pull out of their game. Today we're going to highlight a few of the things that I personally believe expand what's in Space Engineers without really changing the feel of the game. They still fit within the themes and ideas that the game seems to present, at least I think they do. And so I wanted to highlight these so that you've got an idea of some things that you can add yourself. Today we're going to look at three mods. These are part of a collection that I've put on the workshop and we'll go through the other mods in the collection in time. The first mod we're going to look at is the Rover Cockpit. This mod's been around for quite some time. It was originally designed by Darth Biomech shortly after planets were released. Unfortunately over time it's been broken a couple of times by updates and Ixta and now most recently the Immersion have updated it to get it working again. When I originally started building on planets, I really struggled to design my rovers because these cockpits have a bit of a limitation. I like to get a lot of clearance underneath my vehicles so that I don't bottom out the suspension on rough terrain and so that I don't crash quite as often as I might otherwise. And one of the downsides of this is that when you're in a cockpit and you're in first person, you can't actually see much. When you're elevated above the ground and you can't look down below about oh, 30 degrees from the horizon, you're kind of limited. The original industrial cockpit isn't too bad at this, but it does still have its limitations. The fighter cockpit it's even worse. These things were meant to be on flying craft. It's what they look like they were designed for. And Keen hasn't really done anything to add a cockpit to the game that works for rovers specifically. You could try and use standard passenger seats, but with remote controls and third person view, that's pretty limited. So instead, we go to the modders and we have a look at this. This is the rover cockpit. It's not upside down, it's meant to be this way, and it'll allow you to actually see where you're going properly. As you can see from first person, you've got a really good field of view that should allow you to get around on the planet fairly well in first person. But wait, there's more. It's got another upside. It's much easier to armor yourself from above. There's a good chance that when you're driving around on a planet, the enemies that you're going to be facing will be above you and flying. And to protect yourself from that, you probably don't just want glass. You probably want something that's actually going to provide some degree of protection. With a cockpit like this, you can place armor on top and give yourself that protection. This mod works on small grids as well as large grids. If we have a look through our list, we can see it show up here. There are a couple of versions of this mod. The one you want is the Rover Cockpit in brackets fixed. That's the one I'm using today. And there we go, it works on large grids, but it does look a bit funny with that rear that's the same as on the small version. And not the prettiest way of lining this up to large grid blocks. So my personal feeling, I'd only use it for small grids. But for small grids, it can work really nicely. Over here we've got a rover that I built quite a while ago for use on a desert planet survival scenario that I was playing. I had a lot of bases placed around me with enemies flying in and out, so I wanted some way to shoot them down. So I made this thing bristle with guns and had a lot of heavy armor above my head so that I don't cop too much damage while driving around. Like all cockpits, you can go into third person and get a good view 
which isn't the case if we were using the passenger seats. This cockpit has such a good field of view that you can even drive from first person and have a reasonably good chance of not running into stuff. Yes, you saw me run into a tree before, but that's more a relation to how bad a driver I am than to anything about the mod. While in first person, if I keep an eye on my radar, I should be able to know where enemies are and how to position myself. Then I can just let my guns do their thing and let the armor above my head keep me safe. If you've been watching closely, you may have noticed while I've been driving around a little red blip on my radar. That brings us to the next mod we're going to talk about. One of the limitations of Space Engineers since planets were introduced was that cargo ships couldn't fly in atmosphere. The way the cargo ships were designed was for use in space. They were meant to be something that could fly on a fixed trajectory and then be despawned and deleted from the game if they weren't interacted with by a player. Once planets were introduced, gravity started to have an effect on that and so cargo ships would just crash to the ground and over time you'd get lots and lots of cargo ships littered about the place, damaging the terrain, adding lots and lots of extra grids and tanking performance. So then King got rid of them and then one of the community managed to figure out how to make them work so that they wouldn't spawn in any gravity field and that their vector would not take them through a gravity field. But even once they were reintroduced to space, Keen still hadn't figured out a way to get them to work in planets. Well, that's where Meridius 9's mods come in. To get cargo ships working in atmosphere, there are two mods you can use. The first is by Meridius 9 alone, and that's the mod that actually creates the framework to spawn these ships, take them on their path, and then despawn them if you haven't interacted with them. The second mod is a combined effort between Meridius 9, Whiplash 141, and Raptor 359. It's a small collection of ships that will spawn using that framework and there are other mods out there you can use to add further ships to your atmospheric cargo ship list. We know how to add AI NPCs to our game on planets, but we'll know where they're coming from because they'll always come from a base. The nice thing about this mod is it adds something a little bit more dynamic by having these cargo ships come at us from any direction and that we'll have to chase them at a high altitude. You've then got to figure out how on earth you bring this thing down and even more so, how to bring it down while still leaving it intact enough that you get some useful salvage from it. It's all well and good to shoot these things down, but if you don't get anything good back from it, what's the point? We want to be able to get some good salvage, some good materials. So that's going to add even more challenge to what we're trying to do. Already included are nine ships that you can go up against. The ships included so far come in a variety of shapes and functions, a variety of difficulty levels as well, and I think that's quite nice. Having something that you could take on early on, as well as something you can aspire to later, adds to the longevity of the game, which is exactly what I'm after in a mod that's adding AI or NPC content. I want something that's going to drive me to create something different, something more than I normally do something beyond what the vanilla game makes me do or gives me the desire to create. I'm usually not too short of ideas of things that I'd like to create, but it's always nice to have something that you've got as a particular benchmark for a challenge when you're going off to build a new ship. And I think this mod adds that in a very nice way. Now that we're getting closer to this ship, we get a bit of a better idea of how it's decked out and whoa that's a lot of guns firing at me. I think we'd have a lot of difficulty taking this thing out. And I th and that's probably fair since if you could take this out you would end up with a substantial degree of thruster components as there are some large ion thrusters and small ones on there as well. The weaker ships that I've seen in this list they don't have any ion thrusters, and to my mind that's a good thing. If they had them, you'd be able to get thruster components easily, you'd be able to get platinum fairly easily, and 
that might take away some of the fun from playing on planets since that's one of the limitations you're supposed to have to try and deal with. In my experience so far, these have been working just fine. So if you want to add them to your game, those mods will be in the list that'll be provided in the description of this video. Now we'll jump back to the base and take a look at our final mod. So the final mod I wanted to look at is actually really, 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 I probably said that too many times, incredibly useful. If I'm wanting to edit lighting in a base or in a large ship, it's actually kind of a pain. When you go to any control panel, first of all, the HUD covers up what you're trying to look at. Second of all, it's really hard to look at the light that you want to change. And third, I don't know which light is which as I'm changing them. My usual method of dealing with this is change the color of a light, look around for the light that I changed and go, oh, okay, it's that one. So let's call that back right. And then I go back in, I find that light that I changed the color on, and then I name it back right. So then I can know which one to change if I want to change its color or its radius, its fall off, etc. That's going to be a slow process. It might be slightly faster if I named them as I built them. But when I'm building, I get a little bit excited. I tend to build a whole lot at once. And then I get really frustrated when I have to go back and name everything afterwards. So we can actually use a mod or a pair of mods that have been created by Jimical and Drago Corvin. Drago Corvin created the framework that allows this mod to work and then Jimical created the, uh, the build vision mod. What this allows you to do is really quite handy, even if it looks a bit awkward. If we have no objects in our hand, we can click on this light and then we can see this little element in our HUD up here. Using our mouse wheel, we can interact with this and change any of these settings live and without having to enter into the control panel. So if we want to change the radius of this light, we can. We simply select it with our middle mouse button and then scroll down to change the value. We're not seeing much of a change because the other lights are covering over. But we can see as I get rid of the green color, everything's going a bit violet and pink. And being able to change lights like that is hugely useful because you can adjust them while you're looking around and seeing what effect they're having on the local environment you can get some really incredible lighting effects done that are so difficult to achieve in any other way or at least incredibly time consuming and require patience that I'll be honest I struggle to keep you can also use this to interact with any other interactable block and adjust a number of their settings without having to go into the control panel. Once you've got both of these mods installed and you get used to using them, you'll wonder how you lived without them. All of the fiddly tasks become that much easier and it just enhances your ability to make fine adjustments and know exactly what's going on as you make them. I, I absolutely love this mod. The reason I wanted to look into these three mods today is that I think Space Engineers is made far better through the use of mods. If you use the right mods for what you want to get out of Space Engineers, you can either change the experience or, as I like to do, try and match sort of to the vanilla experience, but just add to it. I like mods that expand the game as it is without changing it. And these three are a good start. On my workshop, I've got a collection of some of my favorite mods that I think are a good starting point for new players to the game. And I'll be going through each of those mods in following videos. I also think that these mods are a great starting list for any survival scenario that I'm gonna play myself. 
as I think they'll add to the game what I want. Particularly the three mods that I've looked at today. The Rover Cockpit, the Cargo Ships mods, and Build Vision. The creators of these mods put some enormous amounts of work into them. So make sure when you subscribe to them, if you like them, give them a like, favorite them, whatever. I'll have links to any YouTube channels that these guys have, so you can go check them out and have a look at all of their other really cool creations. There are a few more mods that I want to highlight to you guys. But if you've got some that you'd like to have me have a closer look at in the future, after we've looked at those and while I do all my tutorial videos, they'll fit in there somewhere, I'm sure. Let me know in the comments, as I'd love to hear about them, as I don't really feel confident that I've looked through the workshop to its fullest extent. I've got a pretty big library of mods at the moment, but I could always use more, especially really good ones. So let me know. There'll be another tutorial coming really, really soon. So I'll see you then.